We're Tom and Hannah, and we're currently doing a road trip of the South Island. Join us in this video as we explore more of Abel Tasman and the surrounding area. We have loved the campsite so much that we decided to stay for another night. And we've upgraded to a family room, so it's like, it actually feels like a hotel room. It's really nice. It's double the space of our little cabin. But yesterday we were supposed to go to Tarkaka, but because it was Anzac Day, everything was closed. So and we didn't want to commit to doing like over an hour drive to get there. Even though there's lots of other stuff to do, we wanted to check out the shops at the same time. And yesterday we didn't really do much other than split Apple Rock. We just chilled out for the rest of the day. So we want to make it most of our time here. So we're staying another day. To cut, to, to, oh, I can't to, pronounce to it. To talk again. <laughs> We're in this really cool little cafe, just planning out what to do for the day. It seems like there's actually quite a lot to do around here, from like waterfalls to like limestone mazes and things like that. So. To be honest, we just thought we'd come and check out the town, but there is so much to do around it that we might have to rethink our plan. We've just pulled up at the Labyrinth Rocks walkway and we haven't even gone in yet and it already looks like it's going to be amazing. Whoa. <laughs> that looks really complicated. It's bigger than I thought. This place is so cool. I can't believe it's all natural as well. Like it's unlike anything I've seen before. So it's a natural limestone formation and it wasn't until the 90s that this guy called Dave Whitaker sort of leased the land and created the park. And apparently, according to this brochure, if you look carefully in every nook and cranny, you can see some like figures that he's put there. No way. Like little creatures that he's put in the rocks. Let's keep an eye out. This place is amazing. <laughs> this one is called the Snake Pit and we found our first figurine hidden. It's a little creepy pony. Oh, there's some creepy caves in here. Really? Unreal. This place is called Look Up to See the Stegosaurus. But I can't see it. <laughs> we couldn't see the Stegosaurus at all. Maybe we were looking in the wrong place, or maybe we just don't have the imagination for it. Yeah, we're getting to the point now where we're actually getting a little bit lost despite the map. Lives up to his name of Octopus Alley. <laughs> so on the map it says that you can go through tunnels and we thought, great, you'll just be able to walk through some. But no, you've got to crawl through them. As long as there's no wetters, that sounds pretty fun, actually. Oh, well, there's loads of spiders webs here. Is it? I don't want to do it. This section of the park, which is called the maze, is by far the coolest part of it. There's like tunnels and little random rocks everywhere that you have to walk around. It's so, so fun. Oh my gosh, so many bones there. Well, I think we're well and truly lost. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you keep going around in circles, we just were here two seconds ago. <laughs> so fun having to like navigate your way through tunnel systems. So we finally found the last number that we were looking for, which is the Witch's Cauldron. So I think now we've seen all of the main points. But I just looked down the Witch's Cauldron and look what I can see. It's Shrek! This has been so fun. I think I actually would have paid a little bit to do this. It's been really, really good. And we haven't even seen all of the paths and roads because there's just so many little hidden alleyways and things. Um, so you could literally spend so long here exploring if you wanted to. Yeah, I can't believe that he, you know, just, he did all this work. He cleared all the pathways 
and just gave it to the to the country for free. Just gave it to the townspeople for free. So cool. Next up, Poopa Springs. So we've just arrived at the Te Waikoro Pupu Springs and it seems like a very, very special, sacred place. And we were just reading all the information about how it's a sacred place and all of the legends attached to it, which is really, really interesting. The walk takes about 25 to 45 minutes, but this whole area is considered sacred. So you can't eat, you can't swim in the water, and there's no taking the water. So blue. It's bubbling. So the reason the springs are bubbling is because it's coming up from underground. Wow. They are the largest springs in New Zealand and the largest cold water springs in the southern hemisphere. The reason the water is so clear is because of that underground filtering. And the only clearer water in the southern hemisphere is in Antarctica. We couldn't come to Abel Tasman without doing the one thing that Abel Tasman is famous for, the coastal walk. We're not going to do the full five day hike and we did think about maybe doing an overnight hike but we're not going to do that either because we've got some stuff to do for the next couple of days. So we're just going to walk as far as we can along the coast and back by the end of today. We just took a little detour off the path to come down to Tin Line Beach and it's so beautiful. There's like cave systems and cool looking rocks everywhere. So we're just enjoying a few moments looking at this beach and climbing over the rocks. We're down on this beach and we were just sitting like enjoying the views. We saw this bird rummage into someone's bag and I think they've just gone for a walk down the beach and stole all their like sandwiches and food out of their bag and Tom tried to chase it down. Problem is I saw it run up in this area but the bush is so dense that I have no idea where it could be. We've heard about Kia's being really cheeky, hence the top. <laughs> and like stealing people's stuff and like ripping into their tents and bags and stuff. Mm -hmm. But these birds, I'm not sure what they are. I didn't expect them to be like that too. When we went to go investigate, there was like loads of people's stuff in that little area. Yeah, they've, that they've done like a little, a little stash of, of plastic bags that they obviously couldn't get into. There was a sandwich that had gone moldy, so probably they'd stolen this sandwich thinking easy food and just couldn't get through the plastic bag. Yeah, so I guess that's a lesson to us to never keep our bags open yeah. or unattended on a beach or in nature. <laughs> So we just bumped into a local who told us about a rather sketchy way of getting down to Apple Tree Beach, which involves a hose pipe to basically abseil down a really steep section of path. <laughs> so I'm gonna give it a go. Here. I'm going to test the waters to see if I want to swim. Maybe. It's cold, but I might get used to it. Do you know what? This might be the last opportunity we have before the winter to go and swim in the sea or do any wild swimming because it's just going to keep getting colder from here on out and it's a rare, really warm day. That was 100% worth it after we managed to get over the cold and go in. And this is honestly what the whole trip is about, these spontaneous moments where you can just go in the sea. Yeah, definitely. I love spontaneously going into bodies of water. It's just so refreshing and good for your soul. I don't want to get out. I feel like we're on this tropical paradise beach. There's like no one around really. 
there's just the boats passing by in the distance and it's just blue waters and light sand and all these little islands around. I could stay here forever. But if this is the last one we do before the winter, then at least we ended it on a good one. I think we've walked as far as we want to walk now, especially after that lovely swim. Um, I think we got to Apple Tree Bay, so now we're just going to start heading back. I think it's going to take us roughly around two hours to head back, which seems pretty manageable, but oh, we're really cold after that swim in the shade now. And our walk is now over. Done. And I'm still barefoot. <laughs> yeah, fair play. Two hours of walking barefoot. We have had the most amazing time in Able Tasman. It's Abel been Tasman. so nice. I'm really going to miss this national park and the surrounding area. It's been so beautiful. Every day has been so lovely. We've seen so many nice things. Every day's felt different and unique, and it's just been so nice to be doing something every day. But is there anywhere like Able Tasman that we can go to next on the South Island? Let us know, we don't really have a plan. We want to just carry on going south, but we don't really know where. Just need to pick Harriet up now from Picton in a couple of days, and then we'll be on our way to exploring more of the South Island. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell to stay up to date with what we get up to. But until then, we'll see you on the next one. See you next time.